Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial, we're going to take a look at the power of the wave warp effect and have some fun with this effect. So in the effects panel, in the distort video effects folder, you'll find one of the most powerful effects in Premiere Pro, which is the wave warp effect. If I was to click and drag this onto any video clip or graphic layer, you'll notice it'll add rippling waves throughout the clip. And this is one of the only effects in Premiere Pro that comes with a built-in kind of animation. You've noticed we've had to do no keyframes here. It just automatically kind of goes through the wave. And in the effects control panel on the left-hand side, we can adjust a few parameters about it, such as the wave type, height, width, and speed, and all of that. So first of all, if you ever notice when you apply it, you do get these kind of black bands that happen because you stretch the clip. You can always fix that by pinning them back down in the pinning section. You can pin them back down to all edges. That'll just kind of stretch those back out again. I find that oftentimes that's useful when you're not working on a text clip. And then pretty self-explanatory is the height and width. This is how tall or wide these waves are. So if you just want like a little ripple like so, you can do that. Or if you just want kind of more like a glitch effect, you can bring it down all the way. Now we just kind of get this cool glitch happening. And this is where we're starting to get into some of the power of wave warp and the fun of it is by adjusting all these parameters, we can get a vast amount of different results. So firstly, you see that just taking things to their extreme, such as the width, height, or, or length makes it, this is almost like a illusion type of effect. And if I increase the speed as well or decrease it, we can make that bounce a lot more and this now will become more like an earthquake type of effect or, or like a shaking type of effect, especially if I lower the height. Now we really just have this kind of vibration effect happening, which is pretty cool. So we've already seen so much just in this, but let's say I was also to apply this on a text layer instead. So if I was just to grab my text tool, write out whatever I want in the program window, and then adjust the font and the size of all that in the essential graphics panel. If I was to apply the wave warp onto text effects, I can click and drag that onto this text graphic layer and I can get a cool sort of wave warp happening on the text. But there's still a few parameters we haven't even touched yet, such as the wave type. So this is your standard sine wave, just kind of undulates up and down. But you can also do cool different ones like square waves. And now you see we're splitting the wave kind of the text into two different scan bars. So we can get this cool double vision, double time effect going on just by separating the height and width. That looks a lot more complicated of an effect that it, than it is. And if I even increase the speed a lot so that we're, we're kind of refreshing these scan lines quickly, then we get this cool sort of scan line glitch effect. Already you can see like we're doing so much just with this one effect. And I can even do on the opposite end of things, if I want to do more like a funky little quirky text bouncing effect, I can lower the speed a lot, or actually I can leave it like so and add another effect on top, which is the posterized time effect. So the posterized time effect will only show a certain amount of frames per second. So I can do like, let me try three frames per second. And let me adjust just the wave width a little bit and just do the height, like barely, barely separated. Now we get this kind of cool, just slight wiggle of the text up and down, giving it a little bit of that cartoon animated kind of hand drawn look that you often see in popular styles. Just a barely, a little bit of animation that we've done simply with wave warp and posterized time on top, something you might normally have to go into After Effects for. So aside from sine and square, you also have a bunch of different ones like triangle that just splits it up in different ways. You can see the triangle, you have sawtooth, circular, you have different ones which can, by playing around with them, can give you all kinds of different effects. And the other thing we haven't even adjusted yet is the wave direction. So I can also increase, or I can change the direction so I can make it vertical or horizontal. And the other cool part is, although it does animate by itself, if I was to just add a keyframe onto the direction, 
and change it over time. That's another way that we can change the way it's animating and add some flexibility into this. Play around with the extremes of this effect. For example, I can even lower the speed to zero, making it not move at all. Now we don't even have a wave warp. We just kind of have a displacement effect happening. So honestly, there's so many different combinations that you could do and then stacking other effects on top. I just wanted to show you having some fun and the power with the wave warp tool. You can use it for effects, transitions between clips, adjustments on top, on top of adjustment layers, even masking the effect onto just certain areas of the clip. Don't forget about masking. So if you enjoyed this video, you can check out more in the playlist on my channel. Subscribe here on YouTube and check out my website for resources and assets. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.